Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to do another rod review of the St. Croix Legend Tournament Bass Casting Line, the Jerkbaits Rod. I'm going to do an in-depth review that uses DMRVP, that's Description, Meaning, Relevance, Value, and Purpose to describe or, or to assess the rod, let's say. So it's going to be a long uh, review and if you want to just jump around, please do so. But most of it will be on the description of the rod, and then I'm going to spend some time on the value and relevance as well as the, the meaning of this rod. Anyway, I've been using this rod a little bit for doing some jerk baiting, so let me take you to the water so I can introduce you to the jerk bait rod. I'm also working on the St. Croix Tournament Legend bass casting rod, the jerk bait rod, and I'm going to give this a shot. I'm really trying to hone this in and try to get it working. I'm going to throw it today on a uh, Shimano um, 70 HG reel. I think the 70 size will make it easier for me to cast. It's a medium power with an extra fast action. It's six foot eight. And that's what makes this rod so incredible for fishing jerk baits as well as other twitch baits like poppers and soft jerk baits. Let me talk about my initial impressions when I first got it out of the tube when it was shipped to me. Obviously, you can tell I've been using it a little bit, so I've had some time, but my first impressions were, were, were interesting. First of all, I felt that this rod might have been a little short for me. Uh, I mentioned that it's six foot eight, and I think for me, I'm a six foot one guy. I think I could probably use a six foot ten rod, but I've learned to enjoy this rod just the way it is. I love the blue color. It, it sparkles in the sunlight. It's a very stark color. If you don't like blue, then it's Maybe for that reason, buy another rod, I'm not sure, but it's very stunning. The, the eyes um, are really well done. They're anti-tangle um, uh, eyes, and the, the eyes on the very end here are very nice and small. And I thought that was very impressive, and that helps make the rod as light as possible. It, this rod did feel light, no question. And I love the lockdown nut, which is the anodized aluminum. Very, very solid. I can really crank down to get that real tight. And when I hold on to it, it just feels really nice. You know, it, 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 it's really smooth, I should say. And that's a really nice feeling. I think this rod, generally the balance of this rod, what I mean by the balance, okay? Let's put a reel on it. I'm gonna grab the seven here. When I talk about the balance of a rod, most people will do kind of this and they'll try to balance it on their hand and all that. That's all nice. but. That, that's maybe not as important to me as the balance I, I, I have in my mind of the length of the handle compared to where the real seat is right here and the length of the rod when you have a bait tied to it. And when you want to go make a cast, when you want to make a cast like this, right, because generally you use two hands, does this feel right? Does this length, this distance between here and here where you hold on, does that feel right in comparison with the length of the rod? Well, this distance is fine feels like the rod, like to me, should be another two inches longer. I'm going to say that, and yet I'm happy with this rod. Just keep that in mind, okay? So that's an interesting thing. I've had rods in the past that were just incredibly off balance. The rod handle was too long for the length of the rod or was too short. This rod is, is, is fine, has a good casting, casting balance, I should call it. That's what I should call it, a casting balance. I really like this rod. I've grown to like it because I've been able to choose the right reel. Initially, I was using a Shimano SLX 150DC, and I was not getting the casting distance from that reel as I expected. So in a last-ditch effort, really, frankly, to, to get this rod useful, I put on a 70-size reel. I went for the Shimano uh, Corrado 70MG reel, and that made all the difference. That small spool right there made it easier for casting these light baits long distances that are necessary and i think that was the trick okay so uh, i highly recommend using a 70 size reel without question shimano perfectly great reel i don't know these are 360 to 380 i'm sorry 260 to 280 dollar reels i also tried on this uh, st croix 7 uh, bait casting reel 7 is really the brand name and it cast very well on this rod as well. So I think the key was to go to the smaller size spool, the 70 size spool. Now, the difference between these two uh, reels is significant in price. So this is about a $120 reel, okay? So if you wanna 
be a little more budget minded, I, I recommend this reel on this rod. But if you don't mind spending a little extra money, the Shimano is just a fantastic all around reel, as most people know. And by the way, I'm also very interested in the new Shimano Metanium 70DC reel. It's an incredibly expensive reel, it's $500. I don't know if I'm gonna pick one up, but I think that would make this rod castability just really fantastic, especially for poppers. These uh, light little poppers like this, this is a Rico, quarter round bait. And when I wanna make casts, I wanna make a very long cast with this really light bait. So having a reel that will allow you to throw this bait a long way is important. So let's go to my slideshow where I give you all the specs on the, this particular rod as well as the technologies and materials used in the Legend Tournament line of rods. This is a St. Croix Legend Tournament fast casting jerkbaits rod. The specifications are as follows. The model number is LBTC68MXF. Techniques is jerkbaits and the price is $295. The length is 6 foot 8 and it weighs 3.67 ounces. The power is medium and the action is extra fast. The line weight is 8 to 20 pounds and the lure weight is quarter to 5 eighths ounce. And here's the model number as seen on the rod. It is a split grip handle. The reel seat is a Fuji SK2. The seat lock is a machine cut anodized aluminum which makes it very strong and smooth. It has nine Fuji K-series tangle free guides with alkylite rings. Here are the rod technologies. SC4 Plus hybrid carbon fiber combines St. Croix Level 4 high modulus carbon fibers with St. Croix Level 6 super high modulus carbon to produce the lightest, most sensitive, and balanced rods possible for the money. It also allows for the Legend Tournament line to possess a large number of technique specific rods to choose from. IPC stands for Integrated Polycurve. It is a computer-aided design and tooling technology that allows for the design of specific power and action combinations. Polycurve stands for polynomial curve used in CAD design packages to create smooth curves between control points. This eliminates abrupt rod blank transitions making them stronger. What I find incredible as a software guy is that modern machines can cut the long thin rod mandrels that follow the long tapering curves. ART stands for Advanced Reinforcing Technology. It is a special carbon fiber material that when placed strategically on a rod blank provides 10x strength without adding weight, St. Croix claims. The purpose is to improve the hoop strength and thus prevents the blank from deforming under severe load. FRS stands for Fortified Resin System. It is a combination of super high resin and computer controlled curing ovens that keep the fiber properly aligned. St. Croix claims that this process makes the rods 33% stronger. TET stands for Taper Enhancement Technology and it is the process of cutting curved blank patterns based upon computer designs that combined with IPC mandrels creates blanks with better actions and improved sensitivity. IACT is a technology used in a number of the Legend Tournament rods that combine the SC4 Plus graphite material with linear S-glass technology that runs through the full length of the rod. The SC4 material is placed in locations and amounts to optimize strength, sensitivity, balance, and weight. The unique action helps with the casting accuracy and that is something that I can verify. IACT gives the rods a softer, more moderate action targeted for use with reaction baits and treble hooks for fast moving baits like a spinner bait, buzz bait, or chatter bait. The results created by the use of these technologies are rods that are lighter, cast better, and more sensitive and stronger to the degree that St. Croix provides a 15 year warranty. The current policy for warranty replacements is a $60 charge to ship you a new rod. That process is very simple. You take photos of your rod model and serial number and a photo of the break, fill out a warranty claim on the website and upload the photos. The St. Croix customer service rep will contact you to make arrangements for the $60 payment. Lastly, and one of the reasons that I chose St. Croix is that the Legend Tournament rods are made in America and Wisconsin specifically. I'm happy to buy American every chance I get. Now that we've gone through the detailed specs of this rod, let's take this rod out to my courtyard and see how it acts when I put it under load. This is really a great way to tell the power and action of a rod. So let's go see. So let's take a look and see how this rod responds. So I'm pulling on it, not, not very much power at the moment, I'm, and I'm getting a, the, the bend in the top part. 
and now I'm putting some pressure on it. If you can see, it very much looks like the top quarter of the tip is bending. Now I'm going to put some power into it. Let me reel it down. I'll put some power into it. And I'm not putting a lot of power on this rod yet, and I'm getting this, 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 um, this arc and this bend. Um, now, now I'm putting some pretty heavy pressure into this rod, which, by the way, <laughs> if you're fishing, let's say, a topwater jerkbait might be too much pressure, but the fish might have something to say about that. The purpose of this rod is definitely as designed by St. Croix and as my purpose is for a jerkbait rod. Not only, I think, is this a fine rod for that particular use, I also believe it's a great rod for other twitch baits, as I've mentioned. You can twitch a poppers, you can twitch other baits, walk, small walking, uh, topwater walking baits, and you can also do soft jerk baits. So this rod is suited very well for doing all those things. So I have been fishing in this rod for a few months now. Uh, I started out with the SLX 150, as I mentioned, and I just did not like how that cast. I was having troubles casting with that reel. Move to the 70 size and boom, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, I'm way to go. I have footage of me using this as on a jerk bait, catching some fish at Apache Lake. So I know that this rod one does throw a certainly a, a, um, a full, you know, this is a Edo Vision 110. It's a, about a half ounce bait, so it can easily throw this half ounce bait a long, long distance, okay? So that is fine and fantastic. I can also throw the Edo Vision Junior. It doesn't cast as far, it doesn't weigh as much, but I can cast it just fine. Also, notice that, you know, I talked to this rod as a twitching rod. As such, the action is important here. Um, and I've been asked a question on uh, my YouTube uh, video about fishing this, this rod at Apache, that it, the rod is a medium action rod with an extra fast tip. This is sort of different than what people have been talking about, like you, sh you should do slow action, rods when you're using baits with treble hooks, especially crankbaits, you know, things like that, you know, get a slower action rod. And I've done a review on some of those types of rods and I'll have some more reviews coming. And I do love using uh, glass and carbon combination rods for crankbaits. I really do. It really slows that reaction down. So when you get a fish biting that uh, crankbait with all the hooks, you know, it, they, they stay pegged better. That's what everybody says anyway. I think it's true. But this isn't. This is a pure carbon rod. So why is it that as an extra fast tip instead of, say, a moderate tip, which would be better for a bait with treble hooks? Well, the answer to that is this is a twitching rod or a jerkbait rod. So the action you impart into the bait comes from you, the angler, the sh your shoulder and your wrist. And you, you spend, it's a lot, it takes, and it takes a lot of action and power to do that. And when you're doing that all day long, it can wear you down. So that's why the lightness of this rod is fantastic. And that's probably why, honestly, that's why St. Croix probably made it six foot eight because it made it a little bit shorter, easier for jerking, you know, jerking the bait when you're down there next to the water. And it's just a lighter rod, basically, easier to handle and manipulate. So they probably did a perfect job and I'm adjusting to it as I should. But let me just talk about the extra fast tip and how that's not a moderate action tip that you would get with a crankbait rod because you need that tip to help you to impart that action and the energy that is coming from your shoulder your elbow and your wrist goes through the rod and goes through the line down into the bait so when you're twitching it you want the rod to help you to to help transfer that energy using the less amount the least amount of energy on your body as possible if that makes any sense so It'll get the energy to the bait, giving it the sharp little twitches you want, even if they're subtle twitches, you know, they're very subtle. You just want, or you want bigger strokes. That power from your shoulder, elbow, and wrist need to get through this rod into the bait. So I think that's the beautiful part of this extra fast tip. Now, with that said, because it's a medium action rod, I consider this to be a little little lighter side of medium, okay? And that's probably works out very well and is important when you get a fish on. You have a little faster tip, but you have this you know medium power. The, the, the a little a little less. It's a little softer. It's not as soft as a, a carbon uh, glass rod by any stretch of imagination. But it, that medium action here, I mean, medium power, gives you that ability to fight that fish well, and. If you notice, when I was out in the courtyard and I was lifting up, the rod was definitely loading up and I wasn't getting much power in it. And that's, that's important because you don't want to overpower 
a bass when you have it on, a, a, a jerk bait, a treble hook bait, or something, or a, you know, a topwater bait. And I'll say this over and over, really in my mind, rods to me, number one, are for casting, number two, for fighting the fish, and then thirdly, you know, the sensitivity thing. Is I'm not hung up on sensitivity. Especially on a reaction bait, you know, a uh, reaction rod, let's say, when you're, you know, you don't necessarily need to, to feel, because when you're jerk baiting something, you're like, oh, you know, when you go to pull down again, the fish will be on. You can easily sense that without any question. So is this rod relevant to me? And that, absolutely it is. Uh, let me tell you why. We can fish jerk baits for many months here in Arizona. We certainly, it's winter time now. I've been running this jerk bait rod since uh, mid December easily, right? I've done it all the way through January and I can still keep running this jerkbait probably through pre-spawn for sure. I think there's a real uh, period of time post-spawn where a jerkbait can really work well if you're in the right conditions. So I think right that puts us up up until May. And then as soon as May starts, you know, or post-spawn or generally that's the case here in Arizona. So after jerkbait season is over, I can tie on a popper and just leave it tied on all summer long. And that takes me right into fall, where um, I use this in the backs of coves on the dragonfly bite. So I can just keep this popper on this rod for most of the most of the time. And so I think this is relevant. It's relevant to me to use all those things. Another thing that I did use it for, and because this rod does have an extra fast tip, I could use this particular uh, soft jerk bait. This is a zoom fluke, right, with a nice ice hook. And I did catch a fish on this uh, when I was fishing in the backs of coves. I threw it out there, it let it sink, I twitched it twice and a fish grabbed it and I went to twitch it again. Uh, the fish was on, I didn't feel him bite because I gave it slack line, but I, you know, I, I lifted up, and started reeling and hook embedded very, very nicely. So even a soft jerk bait is a good, and that's a single hook type bait. So this rod can be very relevant to you in your different styles of fishing. So let's talk about meaning and meaning what meaning that means is how does it affect my concern so you know look this is a if when i'm want to fish in a jerk bait this rod is really light i can go all day long with this and that's the beautiful thing so it's a lightweight rod because it's short and all and because the way it transfers the energy through the tip the extra fast tip it reduces the stress on my body so that's very important to me and that gives me endurance for fishing all day with a top water or most of the day with a jerk bait. So that's important. That's that's a concern. Can I fish all day with a jerk bait if I wanted to? With this rod, I certainly can. And the, does this handle fish well? Okay, so the biggest fish I've caught was just under two pounds, and it handled that fish without any problem at all, right? The, the, the fish was hooked well, it stayed hooked, it was, it was fantastic. So I don't I don't think that's gonna be an issue. We'll see if I get a bigger fish on here, and I'm ho hopefully I'm going to do some video on that. When the springtime hits at uh, Lake Lake Apache, I can, I can get on the jerkbait bite, and I think it's going to be fantastic. So is this rod valuable to me? And I think the answer is yes. It's at $295. I can afford it. It's, it fits in my budget. It's relevant to me because I can fish jerkbaits and topwater which I do a lot, a lot, you know, throughout the year. And finally, you know, it manages, manages my concerns of weight. It's a lightweight rod, endurance. It helps me with endurance and it allows me to, to make the casting uh, with the right reel. Again, I, that had to be the right combination. And also, you know, just how it handles the fish when I get it on. So it, it, it does a nice job of all those things. So I think this rod has a, is very valuable to me. So is this a, a rod that you should pick up? If you like jerkbait fishing, I would suggest yes, absolutely. You can run the jerkbaits all winter long, and then you can move right into the topwater in the spring and all through the summer and fall. So I think it's a good rod for that. But if you just want it for topwater baits, perhaps not. There are other rods in the St. Croix Legend Tournament line that are just perfect for throwing these small little top topwater baits. I've done it this last fall. I'm going to do a rod review on that rod as well. So. I have options, by the way. So if the bite's really on, I can put on different sizes of topwaters or different jerk baits. I can do a lot of different things. Thank you for watching this video, and please like, subscribe, and comment below. If you're already subscribed, please leave a comment. You know, ask a question. I love trying to answer questions to the best of my ability. So please do that. All doing all those things help the algorithm allow YouTube to present it to more people. So to me, that's important. So please give me a hand with that. I'd appreciate it. Have a great day and hope to see you on the water.